Love you, Akadish Baruch Put your spirit in me deep. Place peace in my heart. Place patience in my heart. Because if you want peace, you need patience. Patience is the road to peace. Especially in this world. And I don't like saying the world is dirty. It's not the world that's dirty. It's the people. God forbid the wicked people make the earth dirty. It reminds me of the story about this girl, Grace, I know. She likes to feed the pigeons. So one day, some like Karen came up to her and said, You're not allowed to feed a pigeon! It's illegal! And she took out her phone and started to like videotape her. So Grace is like, Yo, what are you doing? She's like, I don't like the pigeons. She's like, Why? She goes, Because they're in there. So Grace looked at her and goes, No, ma'am. You're infected with a hate in your heart that you better cure it because in the end, Haiti destroys the hater. Somebody did you dirty, fall back and let God deal with it. Why? Because Haiti destroys the hater. You're going to take care of it by yourself. You're going to kill yourself. You want to take revenge? Dig two graves. One for the dude you're going to kill and one for you, God forbid. Yo, let me talk about social media right now. Real quick, yo, it says in the Torah, there shall be no prostitutes amongst the daughter of Israel. Let me give you some words of advice, yo, if you a young girl, maybe 15, 16, all day posting videos of yourself on TikTok, Instagram, on social media. Now, how many dudes look at your picture? You know how many dudes, God forbid, forgive me, Hashem, spill seed to your picture? Yeah, I'm going to tell you to your face like you were my daughter, yo. That's what I would tell my daughter. If my daughter went on social media half naked, showing her body, acting sexy, puckering up her lips, for what, yo? To attract men? To, they can bask in the glory of your beauty? Nah, bask in the glory of God, bro. Don't be doing that, bro. It leads to many, many sins, yo. And that's why a lot of these girls have no peace in their heart. Why? Because they're chasing something that's false. When you chase something that's false, it's like chasing the wind. You can't catch it. <laughs> you can try all day and night, catch the wind. You can't even see it to catch it. How are you going to catch it? And that's what it's like, yo. They sell you fake dreams that's showing pictures of yourself. And you think people are going to like like it. You want people to like it. Yo, you look so high. Yo, nobody's like you. Your beauty's on another level. Yeah, that's what the Satan shows you that side. But he doesn't show you the other side. The girls that hate. And I'll give you the best proof how many times you've seen girls attack a girl because she's pretty and then destroy her on social media and God forbid the girl commit suicide. From what? From social media. Why? Because she showed her body online. You know what I mean? If you want peace in your life, don't tell your business to nobody. Do you understand what I'm telling you? She's telling your business or showing your business. Word up. Don't show your business to nobody. You know what I mean? Keep your beauty to yourself, yo. You want, you're a girl. You're Jewish. You want to wear a bikini on the beach? I get it, yo. I'm not gonna say it's okay. It's not. Hashem will give you a punishment for that because it's machtia rabim. Every guy that looks at you, that thinks dirty thoughts, you're gonna have to pay for that, yo, because you have a hand in the sin. It's called putting a stumbling block in front of the blind. The men, it's not like they're blind. The fuch, they see real good, but they get stumbled like they're blind. Why? Because they're so enamored with the beauty. He's willing to cheat on his wife of 10 years with their two beautiful twins and lose everything for seven minutes of pleasure. Should I say seven seconds if you real? Come on, man. Come on, Klai Israel, man. You're too smart for this. You're the smartest nation that ever existed. So why are you chasing smoke? I don't get it, yo. You have a gemstone, a diamond, an emerald, and a shem, a ruby. And you're chasing after dirt. I don't get it, yo. I don't get it because you know why? Because you're not close to God. And don't get it. Like I told this kid today, yo, please don't be intimidated by God. You know, people think like you have to accept God in your life. It's, oh, it's a very hard. No, it's not. It's the most beautiful thing you'll ever do because you'll put your ego low, let it go, and know that God is one in the show. What could be better than that, yo? Somebody hurt you? Let it go, yo. Move on and don't talk about it all day because you're going to keep reliving your hell. And when you relive your hell, that's a great tactic that the satan uses to keep you sad or to keep it in your heart yo yes get it off your chest like i told this kid but you get it off and then fall back you don't keep talking about it you know what i mean you see what clay israel hasn't figured out is that your mood it doesn't rely on the food even though it does but your mood really relies on your righteousness 
If you see a kid that could be the nicest kid, everything perfect, and he's sad, there's something going on. There's a sin, there's sadness. It's stemming from something, but it's stemming from something negative. That's why he's sad. It could be even from his last life. Who knows, y'all? I'll tell you a story right now about somebody from their last life. This girl kept eating, yo. She was like a thousand pounds. She could not stop everything she sees, she eats. So finally, somebody clever said, let's go do regression. You know what that is? When you go get her hypnotized and they go back to her past life. So when they went back in her past life, they found out that she died of hunger. That's why now when she sees food, she just eats everything. You understand? Something is going on, yo. It's stemming from some kind of a sin or some kind of a trauma. The last thing I'm going to do is lie to you. So I'm going to tell you the truth. Every sadness, every pain, every hurt that you have in this world stems from a sin. It's a punishment for a sin you committed. Even look at Tisha B'Av. It's coming up next week, so we have to be sad. So what sin do we do? The Jews used to fight with each other. There was baseless hatred. There was a lot of bad things that happened on Tisha B'Av. Stemming from what? From sins. You know what the most precious thing in this world is? You're going to tell me Torah, of course. But it's really time. Without time, you won't even have time to study Torah. Time is the most precious gift you can have in this world. So look at the genius of the Satan. He's going to make you waste your time on social media. You're going to scroll through 5,000 short videos of parrots talking. The Chaya, you can't joke Go look. Go look at social media, bro. And you'll even have good things like, you know, uh, the Law and Crime Network. You'll see some body cam footage of some crazy things, whatever it may be. It's taking you away from God. You don't even realize it. Maybe that depression that Hashem is giving you is telling you, wake up. You want to be happy? Stick to me. I am like one of the best people to testify to this, yo. Happiness comes direct from studying or teaching the Word of God. <laughs> Come look at my face right now and see how happy I am, yo. Why? Because I'm teaching the Word of God. You want peace in your life? You want happiness? Everybody's looking for this magic pill. There's no magic pill, bro. It's not going to be weed. It's not going to be coke. And it's definitely not going to be crack. You understand? Get it through your head, yo. The magic pill is the Torah. That's the magic pill. Everything that the Satan tells you not to do is the magic pill. He's going to take you away from Torah. He's going to convince you, I can't accept God. It's too much, right? You're intimidated of God. Huh? Satan won. Check. Another win for the Satan, yo. When all a Jew has to do is just study Torah. And everything will fall in place, yo. It's crazy. Listen, I don't like to tell my business to nobody because if you want peace in your life, don't tell your business to nobody. But sometimes I sacrifice my business for the betterment of Klai Israel. And I went through some problems, you know what I'm saying? Where I got let go from some school. I was the best teacher there. I'm not afraid to say it. And Hashem would stamp that, yo. And I only say that not to brag or boast because it's the truth and the truth is above everything. And they got rid of me. And it's been almost three, four years that I haven't been able to get a job teaching in the schools. I don't think that hurts my heart. It hurts my heart more than you'll ever know. So how could it be I'm happy? Because it's the wisdom of God. Put your ego low. Let it go and know that God is running the show, bro. Also know that if you're really, really good at something and Hashem takes it away from you, He's going to give it back double, yo. Double. Maybe even more than double. You understand? So these things bring peace to your heart. I'll give you the best example. There was a lady that was just saying how she lost her daughter to fentanyl. So she said, you know what brings comfort to my heart? To know that God took her from this earth so she doesn't have to suffer anymore. And that one day, I'll see her again. And she looked at the camera and she goes, you don't know how much comfort that brings to my heart. So where does she get this wisdom from? From God. It's all about God. Because she's already talking about meeting her daughter in the next world. Beautiful. God. You know, it reminds me of a story. There was a mother who passed away. So she kept coming to her daughter in a dream, telling her to meet her at this corner, at this time, on this date. So prior to the date, she kept coming to her in a dream. Come to me. Come meet me here. Meet me here. 
So the daughter was like tripping out. She's like, I gotta go, obviously. You know, this is obviously a sign from God. So she did exactly what her mother said. She went to that corner on that time, on that exact date. And she got hit by a car and died. You understand how deep this world is? You want me to explain that to you? Can't. That's why only certain things are in the hands of God. They're all in the hands of God. But when it comes to wisdom, he's nice enough to share it with us, yo. That's why we're commanded to share the Torah. And I love to share it, yo. <laughs> Love to share it, yo. I wish I could find somebody to support me where all I can do is just sit, study Torah, make videos, and help people. That's all I want to do. Don't want to work for some boss that's a jerk. Excuse my language. I wouldn't even say the word jerk. I don't curse, thank God. You know what I mean? Because I pray to Hashem a lot, yo. I would never want the mouth that I speak to God with to be cursing. You know what I mean? So even the word jerk. I have an alarm in my head that goes off and says, hold up. So let me take that back. But bosses that are not nice, you know, you have to deal with stress, drama, for what? It's all unnecessary. I just want to sit, study, or run my own private school. Or like this one mother I know told me, coach, I want to open up a teen club, an after-school teen club, and I want you to run it. I was like, dope, I'll definitely do that. So we'll see. We'll see if Hashem is going to give me back double. I think so. But one day you're going to see it. And then it's only going to strengthen your love for God. You know, there's a lot of people that see me. And see how, you know, I know Torah really well. And that I should be working in the school. And it doesn't make sense. And where's the justice? And they get more annoyed than I. I don't even get annoyed, yo. Because I already told you. I already know. It's all the Adesh Shamayim. Hashem already is watching everything. What looks like injustice is actually justice, yo. Think about it. So they get annoyed. It's not fair. It's not fair. So when they see me get back double, it's going to strengthen their belief in God. That's exactly I say. I don't like to say believe in God. You know what I like to say? No. There's a big difference between believing and knowing. Believing means you might have some doubt. I believe he'll pay me back. 99.9% he'll pay me back. But there's something stopping you from saying no because no is knowledge. I know he'll pay me back. So I like to say, don't believe in God. Know him. It's a lot better, yo. Or like I said earlier, don't get intimidated by God, yo. Even if you commit a sin, don't get intimidated that God is going to head stomp you to death. He's not. The opposite. He's going to wait for you to come back to him. Just like with Adam and Eve. Yo, when he came to Adam, you know why he got annoyed with Adam? Because Adam should have just said, yo, I messed up, yo. I'm sorry. No, no, the girl you gave me did it. It's the woman you gave me. Right away, starting to deflect blame. That's going to get you punished, yo. Chuva is admitting what you did wrong, yo. Yo, this school that got rid of me, I promise you, they did a lot of damage, not just to me, other people, whatever it is. I'm just talking about me specifically. Man, if they would call me up and say, Coach, yo, we messed up. We're so sorry, yo. Come back and do your thing, yo. In a heartbeat, yo. You don't get it, yo. You don't get it, yo. I would come back because that's it. It's, all, it's amazing the power of the word sorry. If somebody really apologizes to you from the heart and you know it's sincere, man, even if God forbid, Loa Lengu, they murdered your mother, you'll forgive them. And I'll give you the best proof because you'll see that he's ready now to murder himself. He's going to commit suicide because he feels bad that he murdered your mother. You're going to convince him not to commit suicide. Right away, you're going to accept his chuba. Such a beautiful proof And you're gonna know That whatever happened Happened Your mother's in heaven And now she's good to go Man the world is deep Sometimes it's too deep For you to creep You know what I mean <laughs> Don't look in places Where you shouldn't look That's what Hashem tells you That's why I would tell NASA man, Stop spending billions of dollars To look for alien life bro It doesn't exist And if it exists You're never gonna see it The intelligence in this world Goes like this It's God Man Animal Vegetation and inanimate objects. You're gonna tell me an inanimate object has wisdom? Of course. Somebody had to make it. The wisdom of God is all in it. And what makes a building stand or a piece of wood stay solid? It's the energy of God, yo, man. Y'all don't understand, man. He's all in this world. That's what it says. Olam ne'elam. The word for world is olam. It comes from the word ne'elam to conceal. And it teaches us God is concealing Himself. In this world, in nature, look at a tree when it grows. Look at the trees, they don't even touch, yo. I didn't have to ask, I look for myself, yo. 
You ever see a flower grow in time lapse? Unbelievable. Or a vine, how it would climb and go around. And, yo, the plants talk to each other, yo. Show me two trees next to each other where their branches are touching. They're not. One goes up, one goes down. If you see them crashing, it's because that branch is dead. Yes, this is so true, man. Y'all don't understand, man. <laughs> The trees talk. I just told you this, yo. Go check. Look at two trees next to each other. Look at the branches, bro. They go all around. Sometimes they'll go in a loop. Literally, like, go around and under. Go check. You don't need me. Go look with your eyes at the beauty of God. It's all over the place, bro. I love you so much, Hashem, for letting me do these videos, yo. Nobody will understand, yo. <laughs> the amount of peace you have to have in your heart to do these videos, yo. You have to be so stuck with God. You have to literally lay back and let God use your mouth to speak, yo. Speak through my mouth, the Kaddish Baruch Hu. I take all the wisdom I learned about God and I speak. And some Rashad's going to say, Oh, you have to speak like you're a God. You're not God. How could you say it? No, but I could say that I know what God thinks. You know why? Because he tells me what he thinks. He tells me what he thinks about lefty, liberal, Jewish Democrats. He don't like them, yo. He don't like them. He's got a lot of beef with them, you know what I mean? He tells me what he thinks about social media. He wants to destroy it for eternity. But he leaves it because you can also do mitzvot from it. It's a test. <laughs> but he'll destroy it soon. Don't worry. It's like one ugly rabbi said, yo, he's trying to convince people. That God doesn't know the future. Can you even understand how crazy this rabbi would be to say that? So he's on a call with one of his students, like on a Zoom call. And the student is getting scared now because he sees that the rabbi is teaching him that God doesn't know the future. So he got scared. So he said, Rabbi, God doesn't know the future. So you know what this rabbi told him? With the smuggest look on his face. He knows as much as you do. You understand how disrespectful that is to God? <laughs> Somebody should tell this rabbi that when who was it? Shem saw Avram. He blessed Avram before he blessed God. And the priesthood got taken away from him, yo. Think about it. Wrap that around your head, yo. Don't want to disrespect the Kaddish Baruch Hu, yo. And y'all do that, yo. Y'all do that. You're a married woman dressing in a sexy bikini on the beach and dudes are looking at you? Forget it. Forget about dudes or the God is looking at you. How come you're not ashamed about that? Let me tell you what it means to be a man. This is why you should never look at a sexy woman, yo. Somebody asked me the other day, what do you fear the most? I said, God. And guess what the next thing I said was? A pretty woman. You understand? Of course, if she's my wife, no problem. There's nothing to fear. The opposite, I love her. But if she's not my wife, you don't want to look at that. And if she's married, it's even worse of a sin, yo. Like Job, make a covenant with your eye not to look at a sexy lady. And they're all over the place today, yo. There should be no prostitutes amongst the daughters of Israel, yo. Remember that. Next time you're going to go take a picture of yourself, yo, bending over in some short shorts trying to look mad sexy. Out in your lips, yo. Come on now. Come on now. You a daughter of the most high, man. Don't waste your time. Yo, it's like one girl told me, I like bad boys. So I told her, you know what? Then only bad things are going to happen to you. She said, why would you say that, coach? I said, because you don't see. The Satan is blinding you. So he comes with a cigarette on his motorcycle with his modified muffler. Yo, babies can't even sleep when this dude rolls up. Bad for the world. And you want to be attached to that? Why? Because he's good looking. That beauty will fade. Don't worry about it. But we'll show you some good looking dudes that are not bad boys, that are really good. They exist. What do you think? Everybody that's ugly is good, and everybody that's bad is good looking? It don't work like this, bro. You don't want a bad boy. Like that, you gotta speak to the kids like this, yo. I think the parents today, it's not that they don't know how to speak to their kids, it's just they don't know Torah. That's all it is, yo. My mother says it the best, yo. And you'll get blessed if God came to you and said, Look what's happening in this world. And you're going to say, no, lefty Jews are going to go to hell. That's not going to work out. Even Hashem would agree with you. It's not going to work out. So you know what you tell them? You say, Hashem, your children are misguided. They don't really know, yo. You think she would walk on a beach like this? 
If she really knew who you were, the opposite, she would dress from it to dope. Cloak up, you think. Now, let me explain to you what I just said because it's deep. In one breath, you're cursing the lefty Jews, remove the wicked from your camp. Absolutely. They'll destroy Judaism. They'll destroy the world. They're anti-God. What? God himself is going to get rid of them. But it's not for you to say that's the secret. Let me say that again. It's not for you to say a mother who has a bad son, she could say he's dirty, he's rude. But if you say it, she's going to put an evil eye on you. What you think? It's beautiful proof. Don't, don't God won't do that to you. Don't worry. God has enough restraint not to put an evil eye just because you said something that might have upset him or got him angry. You understand? He has patience. That's why he's God. But he's the father. So he can reprimand him and do whatever. He could kill him. He could do whatever he wants to him. You understand? He could do it and nobody can question him. But when you start judging him real strict and saying how wicked he is, it might be true. And we all know it. Don't need to say it. Because you're only saying it to God who already knows it. He don't need you to say it. You understand? And not only that, it's Lashon Ara. Why? Because it's the truth. Man, I know what I'm talking about, man. Be like Gideon, yo. And sometimes me, myself, a Kaddish Baruch Hu, I'm guilty of that. Because I'll say in my videos, these wicked Democrat Jews have to go. Sorry. And I'll be tough with them, yo. But I have to remember, you know what I'm saying? To show love. But then again, you don't want to be your Termidai Sadiq. You don't want to kiss up to the wicked. So you so reprimand them without insulting them. That's the double secret. You know, sometimes when you want to criticize a person, you could do it in reverse. And I'll tell you what I mean. Instead of saying you you don't you're immodest, you you curse, you you know you're not close to God. You should just say the opposite. You know, you should be a little bit closer to God, and then you know you'll be more modest. You won't curse. It'll be good for you. Let me put it to you like this. Hashem just gave me this to tell you. This comes with everything. With Musar, with the wicked, with the righteous. Whatever you want. Remember these words of advice, yo. A kind word is accepted. And a harsh word is rejected. So even if he's a liberal lefty. And you want to come and give it to him. Good, you're real. You're arrogant. And there's one Jew like that that I want to do that too, yo. He's the head of peace now, Oppenheimer. You know him in Israel politics if you're there. So anti-God, so rude. But you want to fix this guy? You think you're going to fix him by telling him by how ugly he is? And how he has no appreciation for God and how he does everything in his power to destroy the Torah? That's not going to bring him closer to God. Talk to his heart. If it works, it works. If not, let him continue. Because the evil in the end has to run its course. <laughs> it's like, just like this world is the happiness that didn't last, right? It's always going to be some issue. It's going to pop up. Why? Because we sin. So things are going to happen. It's the happiness that didn't last. But here we can also reverse it. It's the misery that didn't last. Just like right now, it's so miserable for Klai Israel. The war, the hostages, the rapes, the babies dying. The families being separated, being refugees in your own land when it's really your land. They can't even be in their houses in the north. So this is like the worst, yo. But even this misery cannot last. In the end, God has the last word. And that word will be beautiful, positive, and filled with love. So don't despair, yo. Mashiach is coming soon, I think. And we say, I want Mashiach now, so there's nothing wrong with me saying, I think Mashiach is going to come very soon. May! Because what you don't understand is that Mashiach now is code word for destroy the wicked and bless this world with your presence. Love you, Mashiach.